that'll be huge. Oh, some great matchups to come. We want to send our love uh, to Anne Rolton and her loved ones as she passed away this week, a pioneer of women's footy. She would love this this afternoon. So to Lisa and Anne's family and friends, we send all our love. The two winningest teams in AFLW history. One's got two cups, the other nothing but years of frustration. Four quarters to confirm a dynasty. It's the 2022 AFLW Grand Final. Erin Phillips starts in the middle and lays the first tackle on Tyler Hanks, who will get the job on Phillips when she is in the midfield. Pierce in the ruck, wins the tap and then goes hunting it herself, but Hatchard gets the first kick of the grand final. It'll bounce towards half forward. Goldrick first back, got Charlton for company. Gets the hands free, releases it to Purcell. But only as far as Najwa Allen. She chips it wide. One of those big three we've spoken of. Hatchard to, towards centre half forward. Heath, punch over the top. Ball hits the deck. Lampard, they pile it on top. So Beck Goddard, Mel Hickey, you would expect Aaron Phillips will just go for, into the midfield in bursts, but spend most of her time forward. I'm not surprised to see her start in the midfield. That's that's where she should start. Um, she she could be one of the most influential players on the field, and so you want what you want your start in, in there, and she'll roll forward. She knows when to roll forward. It's it's not a message from the runner. She knows when to go. So Lauren Pierce won the free kick from the ruck, went down the middle, and also at the chest of Scott. Dimes back in on the footy. Hatchard just with a little poke going forward. A good defensive spoil by Colvin. She was brilliant in their first half last week, the D's. As Maddie Gaze wrapped up. Craig Starsevich mentioned last week against Brisbane that Melbourne really matched their intensity early. They're probably going to need to do that today. As Pierce again just tried to get rid of Gould in the ruck. Now the back to Paxman, a little hand pass off. It's a tight squeeze though in there, although the umpires claimed it was too high. So they can look to chip it wide. And it's landing in the arms of Hanks. So the D's going to need to be patient with their ball movement. Here's Bannon, just got to pick their way through this Adelaide zone. Mixed in here saying during the week, don't be intimidated by it. Don't feel the need to just go long down the line to traffic. Bannon goes to 50 because that's what happens when you do. They get numbers back and they pick it off. Hatchard to Rachich and now Marinoff. She goes short and finds Gould. Bedell cruising by to half forward. Well-weighted kick just over the top of Woodland. Birch there to tidy it up. Off to Colvin. Back towards the wing. Paxman goes up to create a contest and does better than that. She marks it. Pierce has got to be quick. And is. Goes towards Daisy Pierce. Off the front of the contest. Bedell flips it. Awkward one for Martin. Did really well. Shimmy of the hips and got herself free. Kicks to half forward. Maybe a chance here for the Crows. Woodland scrubs the kick inside 50. It's gathered by Mules. Has some time. Gets a look. Heads goalward. Hatchard everywhere early. Got a couple to beat. And Gay works with Colvin. Numbers win out for the Ds. Yeah, they did well there, the Ds. Mithen has her kick partially smothered. This one's going to come back goalward. Up it rises. Unable to come down with it. It's one on one as Phillips tries to use the bodywork against Heath. Heath does well. Colvin's kick just ricochets off the boot of Paxman. Colvin gets it to Heath, who is wrapped up straight away by Button. It's a little more open than I expected early off, girls. I thought it would be a bit tight and tense with a number of stoppages. And moving packs. That's that's what I thought too. Paul goes up against Pierce and then wins it on the deck. Phillips goes to ground. Paxman, lovely step. Back towards the wing. Harrison Randall. Harris goes the punch. Allen tidies it up. Nice delivery finds Thompson. 70 metres from goal, Stevie Lee Thompson. There's what she's got inside 50. Lead offered now from Ponta. Heads in that direction. Up goes Ponta. Couldn't complete the mark. At ground level, Woodland. Snaps goalward. Awkward bounce. Opportunity. Run down in the goal square. Good tackle, Colvin. Handball dodgy. Ponta still there and in the end. Oh, line Melbourne <laughs> concede. Heart and mouth stuff for the D's. You know, I actually think this is a sign of maturity from both teams, Joe. Uh, that it isn't a, a moving scrum. You, you can see that two original teams in this competition have grown and grown in maturity in big games. And, and that's what we're seeing here, sticking to their plans. Play on, play on. So long kick comes out. Helen just gets a shove. 
Harris, careful with the tackling work there. Axman at ground level, Allen again, gets swamped. Diving over the footy was Gay, and she'll get a free kick for two heights. Pierce leads her side for contested possessions. Thought about going backwards. We'll go a little more direct now. Harris will need to get to the pack, but she can't. And Marinoff will really take it uncontested in the end. Has a little run, then goes on the trusty left. We'll send them inside 50. Standing in the right spot was Burt. Spilt Pat, which she should have taken, but then puts a good tackle on Ponta, who's been pinged for holding the footy. So the Melbourne defence have had a bit of work to do, but so far they're holding up, Jase. Libby Birch, such a key piece of that defence. They look to switch. Goldrick down the line. Daisy Pierce sets herself. Allen with a well-timed spoil. Myth in front and centre. Little kick only as far as Gore. A fumble, now trouble. Wrapped up. Scott comes in, lays a tackle, and Randall lays another. Pulled over the top of Pierce. Spills out towards Hanks. Inside 50 for the Ds. Allen back there to try and clean it up. Steps away from Bannon. Uses Najwa Allen. So Sarah to Najwa. Well done. Mithun with courage. Ran across the lead. As Hatchard came thundering in. Kick cut off by Allen. Spills to Charlton. She chips towards the centre of the ground. Well done Colvin. Beats Woodland in a one-on-one. -on -one. Now Lampard, off to Goldrick. Handball just too much on it for Kate Hall. At the back, Thompson. Marinoff. And she'll swing it wide to Hatchard. And Hatchard can go because she's got plenty of grass in front of her. Takes one bounce. And passes over the top to Ponta. The hand pass back in board. And then a short kick looking for the run on of Woodland. Under pressure. Good work by Heath. Ball in dispute, Goldrick climbs back to her feet to try and get it, and a pack forms. The Ds will be happy to lock that one in, I think. And this defence from the, the Ds, their, their ability to be composed and, and stand up under the pressure has, has been so remarkable. I think when they're going inside 50, Melbourne, they really need to stop these shallow entries. That's really where it's going to turn over and, and hurt them like it did in that scenario. They want to be able to get those deep entries. Mick mentioned it pre-match. They've got to get that ball a lot deeper. So Marinoff has given the free kick away for holding, and Purcell will take it. They really butchered that last chance, Adelaide. Ash Woodland was 30 metres on her own inside 50. Kick missed its target, and well done to Heath. Left her opponent to get across and make a contest. Now it's Colvin under pressure. As Woodland goes hunting her, she steps out. Umpire says, throw it in. Well, I agree with you, Jase. I think, really, when you look back at the tape of this first quarter there, Adelaide will be disappointed they haven't had two goals by now, and they should have, and that's a credit to Melbourne's defence. Excellent. So throw in inside 50 for the Crows. Pierce at the back, loves to take it out of the ruck and does effectively here. Harris versus Randall. Randall takes it on the chest. Such a history of success. Chelsea Randall playing on Taylor Harris. To half forward. Marinoff receives the handball from Hewitt. Kicks towards the pocket. Off the hands of Ponter and out as we head down to Sammy. Yeah, Jace, look, what's really struck me, this competition is growing up, isn't it? The, the genuine composure and calm from both camps. Now, Adelaide Crows coach, we know Matt Clark, uh, he's done a lot in footy as a player, played for four different AFL clubs. He said in the pre-match, oh, great day to go fishing. That's how relaxed he was, but he is now the picture of intensity down here on the bench. So Danielle Ponta, tough shot from this angle. She kicked 6-12 for the season, but 5-4 in her last four games. So her accuracy definitely improved as the season's rolled on. Kick on its way. To cross the face. Mark taken. Will it be paid? Yes, it will. Lovely grab, Jazzy Hewitt. And what a story. What odds you would have got. Jasmine Hewitt being the first goal kicker in the AFLW Grand Final if she can slot this through. Jasmine Hewitt played seven games for Adelaide back in 2018. Nasty rolled ankle, 
in the practice matches in 19, didn't play a game, went to Gold Coast, played six games in 20, work commitments in 2021, so she stepped away from AFLW. And then this year, she's back and kicks the opening goal of the grand final. Oh, what a grab. Got it at the highest point. Oh, what a grab that. She got that one at the, at the highest point. That uh, really, <laughs> and, and I think that's going to give her enormous confidence for the rest of the game too. If you haven't been in the side for a while and you've had a bit of a layoff, uh, yeah, that's, she's going to get a tail right up there, Jazzy Hewitt. Yeah, just a third game for the year. Played around three and ten. And you mentioned, Beck, they hadn't got much reward for going forward, but they've been out of the slot. The first one in the grand final. As Paxman has it stolen away. Aldrich trying to put the tackle on. In the end, she emerges with the footy. Zanka spilt it. Goldrick again with the tackle. Gets a little hand pass over the top. There's Hoare. Slams Charlton into the deck. Decent tackle. Here's the free kick of why that shot was taken initially. Birch just putting a bit of body pressure on, but it was off the footy. And this time Birch taking the intercept mark in defence. Now they've had a little trouble moving it from end to end, Jace. And this time it's Maddie Gay. Kicks to a contest. Harris flies high. And that'll work for the Ds. Just get it to ground. Make sure Adelaide don't mark it. Awkward bounce for Rajic. Paxman can run onto it. She's stripped. Umpire says holding the football. And dropping the football more to the point. And Rajic can square it up and find Bedell at defensive 50. So once again, we see that Adelaide defence pressing right up. An air swing there from Button. Daisy Pierce can go inside 50. Well done, Bannon. Forced a contest. Seemed like she had a piece of it. Umpire paid the mark. Chelsea Randall has it. To the outer wing. Martin at the front. Here comes Purcell, flips it out in the Paxman direction. She'll kick it high inside 50. Fitzsimons will have to go. Bedell goes over the top. They all go to ground. Hall comes in over the top. The pie calls for it. That's exactly what Harris needs to do. We know that that's her kryptonite playing on Randall, but she just has to be able to fly and compete in the air and bring the ball to ground, not let the Crows defenders mark the ball. Harris in the ruck. Spills to Pierce, smothered off her boot by Rajic. Coming through his Paxman. Socket off the ground. Mithen taken down and a tackle by Martin. Ball up, 35 out from the Melbourne goal. So inside 50 is now 6 4 in Adelaide's favour. Zanka doing the rough work forward. The clearing kick by Button. And he gets out to the 50 metre line. Adelaide with numbers, although that hand pass went astray. Makes it difficult. The clearing kick will come out onto the wing. And the race is onto the boundary. One on ones. Oh, the good tackle, too. Just flung west of the deck. And McNamara, the last to come up. It was a good solid work by Mules. Marinoff just bursting her way through. Hewitt diving on the deck. And nothing doing. Aaron Phillips yet to have a touch. With two and a half left in the first. So thrown up right in front of the interchange gates here at Adelaide Oval. And Pierce just taps that one towards the boundary line. Phillips tracking it that way. Tyler Hanks with the job on her when she goes into the midfield. Shelly Heath then gets the handover when Phillips goes forward. Gould. Kicks it into Marinoff. Here's Hatchard. Finds her boot. Gains a little bit of territory. Tracking it back is Sheriff under pressure from Martin. Birch comes in over the top and lays a tackle. Last to get up there is Justine Mules. Two-time Premiership player. Pierce again. Takes it from the ruck. It was partly smothered by Phillips. Paxman slaps it to McNamara. Kicks to space in the middle of the ground. It's a two on two. Important one there for Bannon. If she turns, she can kick it now over the back of the defence. She elects not to. Wants to pick a target. It's Gay. Stand. Is that the time the Ds need to think about going quick, Beck? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Because Be when the Crows get numbers, that's what, what happens. happens. Yeah, yep. exactly. 
So the instruction from Mick Stenier is be calm, be patient, but when the opportunity presents, go full throttle. And I think they are being calm and patient, but that's the little bit that hasn't happened yet. But that's okay because it's in the first quarter and there's time to work on that and you can even get to the quarter time break and still be able to pull that off for the rest of the game. Hanks through the hands of Scott. Hatchard takes Hanks on. Hanks did well. And will be, no, dump tackle, said the umpire. Free kick Adelaide. Umpires today selected for the grand final. For those watching at home, the, the selection for grand final umpires is always difficult. It's just, it's like uh, like the players trying to make a grand final team, a bit of a who's the, who's the best, who's made the most correct decisions as the year's gone on, and, you know, what's the best combo, and that's how you get selected for a grand final as an umpire. So Hatchard's kick makes it out to the wing. Disposal number nine for her, hitting all comers on the ground. Bursting through and thrown on the boot was Ponta. Birch did the shepherding work for McNamara, who was unable to reel it in. Out the back, over the top, it comes to Woodland. The Crows have got numbers if they get it out. Desperate was Heath. And McNamara able to kick it over the top, but not as far as she'd like. So Allen's on the end of it, under pressure now. And has done well. But the siren sounds, so we're not going to move any further. Quarter time in the AFLW Grand Final for 2022. It's the home side Adelaide who leave at 117 Melbourne yet to score. From Adelaide's perspective, what's Matthew Clark's message at quarter time, do you think? Kick the goal. Get inside 50 and kick the goal. I mean, I, I think there's just, just a couple of unlucky moments there. Maybe some players with, et, that ended up with the ball in their hands that weren't used to it right in front of goal. Um, don't mess around with it. Even though it looks like time, just get on with it. Second quarter of the 2022 AFLW Grand Final. Here's Joe Watton. So Phillips starts in the middle again. And has won herself the free kick. The tackle lingered from Paxman. And as we just look in the middle, and Maddie Gay's just got a bit of a limp going on. We'll get Sammy to keep an eye on that. She's waving to the trainer. As Phillips goes to Hatchard. Wants to move it quickly. She's found a target and then the hand pass off to Phillips. He'll send them inside, 50. Playing in front, Colvin. Couldn't come down with a grab, but has support from Mithin to put the tackle on. So the ball won't be going anywhere. And well, it's Matt actually been pinged for holding the footy. And Matty Gay could be significant. She was the pre-game plan for Anne Hatchard, who's already got off the leash and had 10 touches. Oh, I hope she can come back on. She's had a tough year. Had glandular in the pre-season. Then Cobra, then Quad issues. So we'll have to find out. If her day is done or she can continue as Melbourne look to clear the ball from defence. Paxman towards Hanks. It's punched away by Marinoff. Mules to Marinoff. Drives it inside 50, but Colvin in best position. Drops the mark. Now she's got a problem. The po problem's name is Ponta. And Danielle misses left. Eventually this weight of numbers is going to be telling though. I mean, they haven't made the most of it yet, but if it keeps going this way... Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's preparing for a landslide. <laughs> Lampard to Mithin. Again, poor disposal from Melbourne. Mithin coughs it up, gives it to Martin. Into the hands of Phillips. Colvin has to try and shut that down and successfully does. But at the moment, the Ds feel a bit like a fighter up on the ropes, just covering up, Mel. Yeah, you can just see that they're a little bit fumbly, that they're feeling the pressure. We know it's a grand final, obviously that's going to be there, but they, they need to just be able to find the ball, find the mark and, and try and slow the game down. Lampard this time will go longer. Over the head of Harris. Throws with numbers at the back. Jones. Rachich had to be quick. Slapped forward by Zanka. Rachich goes at it again against Pierce. It's picked up by Bannon. Off to Purcell. Now to Harris. And it's going to come back. And 50. Oh, no. So that's going to help Alyssa Bannon. Oh, no. If she moves it quickly, there's no one on the mark right now. She can even attack the goal square. Gee, short 50, was it? Looked a little short, didn't it? Might have been taking Beck Goddard's so steps. So Bannon from right on 50. Goes in the Harris direction. Gould at the back. Randall. Some time to assess her options. Just bends it across her body, puts it into the path of Marinoff. Hanks coming in the other direction. Marinoff a slight fumble. Gives Hanks a chance to close her down. Kate Hall comes in, lays a tackle. At least forces a stoppage in the front half for the D's. They're 65 from goal. Those Crows midfielders, they just get back and support 
the defence so well and, and get the numbers back to, to be able to help to outnumber and get that intercept mark. The, the work rate from Marinoff and Hatchard is just so important. And there they are putting the smother on. Little toe poke, but Marinoff cut it off. Just tells a teammate to get out of the way and then switches the footy into the arms of Jones. Back in the side this week from suspension straight down the middle she goes to Hatchard. Oh, that's a great kick. Disposal number 11. Over the top, they'll look to go inside 50, although the ball didn't bounce the way they wanted. And a little hand pass from Heath. Has McNamara kicking it out towards Harris. Has to do the spoiling in the end against Randall. Randall goes to the deck. A little toe poke. McNamara's quick, can pick it up and gets a good shepherd from Scott. So has a couple of metres of time and space. There's three crows in the way. And she tries to hit up Pierce, who did well to win the footy. Horn out. Which way can she go? Little hand pass over the top. Wanted Bannon, but West is there. The goes a little wider. They're just going to kick to the open goal. Bouncing, bouncing. Bannon, she's dangerous in this position. And Thompson was aware of it. There's Maddie Gay on the boundary line, getting that right knee taped up. And maybe the paddock over the back might be Melbourne's best chance of scoring. Get it in quickly. The likes of Bannon and McNamara with their speed to run onto the football. Harris yet to have a touch, and she tunnelled in the ruck contest there. So it's going to be a free kick to the Crows. So as Mel mentioned, they do such a great job at getting those wingers back to defend Adelaide. Mixtonier wants the ball movement to be a bit more aggressive to make those, force those wingers to actually defend as opposed to just peel off and clean up. Nice kick towards Munyard as the ball goes out, which is where we find Sammy. Indeed, Jace. Look, the Matty Gay situation's been quite a mystery initially. Didn't know what they were looking at. And then she had a, a really slow walk after having a fleet of Demons uh, medical experts around her. They are retaping that right calf thigh, knee area as it looks. So perhaps it's just precautionary. Mithin taken down in the tackle. And the importance, Beck, of winning the stoppages, winning the contest for Melbourne, that's how they can get this territory to try and rather than have to pick through the zone, if they can get it and get it away from the stoppage, they can move the footy. And I agree with you, Jace, before you mentioned just kicking it to grass, that might be the best option, but they've got to do it, they've got to do it really quickly because you can see Adelaide are just so well drilled at setting up their midfielders just come back and clean up really quickly. And a couple of times it's been abandoned with the footy and you really want her to be the, one of the ones running On over run. it. Yep, yep. Strong body by Hatchard there against Zanka. Rachich to Charlton. He just bends it around the corner. Goldrick will take the mark. Leading possession. Get up for the Ds with eight. Wants to go bold through the middle. Not sure if it was meant for Hoare or Bannon. But it was red best by Bedell in the end. Usually uses it well. Runs at a 77% disposal efficiency. Ponta with Birch in her pocket. Well, Ponta turns around. Wins the footy and sends it inside 50. Heath with work to do against Phillips. Gets shuffled under the footy. Charlton just kicks it over the top. If it gets to Hatchard, it does. So perhaps a little fortuitous in the kick. But Hatchard wasn't going to drop it when it got there. I feel like that moment started with Ponta actually turning the inside out. And that, that quick ability to turn the inside ball to the outside can be really effective. So Hatchard from directly in front. Oh. Well, she's missed, and really, this that is poor, poor conversion or poor work in front of goal is really keeping Melbourne in it at this stage. But not surprising from Adelaide, really. Yeah. This has one of been one of their weaknesses this year is they get the shots, but they don't go through. But they're about to get another because Sheriff has been run down by Ponta. They kicked 4-11 against the Ds last time they played. DP, she had a really quiet game uh, last week against Frio, so I'm not surprised to see her pop up straight away and have a really good opening, opening half of footy. Kicked behind in the opening turn from a tight angle, similar to this one. Once again, it's going to slide across the face. Minor score. Adelaide were number 12 after the home and away season in accuracy across the competition and we know in finals when you get that momentum swing you've got to be able to put it on the scoreboard and, and score goals so they, they really need to relieve this pressure and 
put it through. Second last in the comp for accuracy right across the course of the season, Birch. And it's often to do with where they take their shots from. Hewitt's pay paid the mark and then played on. So Bannon will come at her. Snaps to 50 and Hatchard at the moment on her way to best on ground honours. She'll kick towards the top of the square for Woodland. Numbers front and centre here for Adelaide. In swoops Phillips and kicks up late second. A sense of inevitability about that one. Margin out to 17 points. And suddenly Melbourne's inability to score, which we said they wouldn't be too panicked about at quarter time, is starting to become a problem. Goats always appear at the right moment. And there she was. She didn't kick the first one of the game. But that was a really good clean up, that one. Just one touch in the first quarter for Erin Phillips. She's had six already in the second and added a goal. So Beck and Mel, one touch for her in Phillips' first quarter. She's up to seven and a goal, starting to impose herself on the game. Oh, and that's what she does because uh, she is greatness. Uh, she's got a winning instinct. I mean, she can smell a goal a mile off and it's very hard to stop. So Melbourne need to switch this momentum around. As Harris has been moved into the ruck. Marinoff, one arm held. Able to get boot to ball. Goldrick. And pass to Paxman. Goes long. And a good kick. Four on the end of it. Now where? They've often had shallow entries. Scott going one way, then the other. A little unsure. She decides to go short. You're nodding back. You like that option? Yeah, I, I did. That's the, the not panic bit that uh, Mixtini was talking about. Just keep, keep working to find the middle ball. Lucille goes long to Harris. The mark taken in defence. No, the umpire saying it was touched, so it's going to be balled up. A bit off the footy too. Shenanigans going on here. Yeah, with Kate Hoare and Marinoff, I think it is, as Harris does the ruck work down forward. Moore puts a tackle on, ball spills out wide. This could be holding the footy as West put a super tackle on. The umpire said there was no prior opportunity. Considine there with the old fake. I got it. I'm trying to get it out, <laughs> umpire. I'm trying to get it out. This would really settle Melbourne's nerves if they could slot one through here. Harris again on the tap. Doing the tackling work was Fitzsimon. So third time lucky. As they get set. Hewitt and Harris with ground level. West goes over the top of Pierce. Umpire said that was okay. Umpire letting it go, but not a lot of action happening. Jace, you have a go. 25 out from Melbourne's goal. Can they get clean hands on this from the stoppage? Get a shot. Find a spark. Through West. There's Hall. Throws the head back. Umpire says play on. Phillips kicks towards defensive 50. An awkward one here for Martin. She gathers. Taken down by Goldrick. Umpire said in the back. That's just an elite pick up with, with back pressure like that. The ball mumbling on, along the ground. Um, that was fantastic. Chance for Adelaide to counter punch. It's a wide open forward 50 now. Munyard has a bounce, it doesn't come back to her. Has to release it quickly. Gould taken down by Paxman. Big ball to be won on the wing. Mules goes again, gets it to Gould. She fumbles it forward. Goldrick commits the body. Munyard emerges with the football, delivers it inside 50. Birch, one on one contest with Jones. Extra number is Adelaide's. Hatchard throws it on the boot. McNamara, Heath, and Button. Heath gets rid of Button, they've got the advantage. Umpire calls a free kick as Button hangs on to Shelley Heath in the Shepherd. Heath goes low. Good strong hands by Kate Hall. Pressure came from Nikki Gore. Important grab. So can the D's start to get a little bit more creative with their ball movement? Mick Sneer saying, look, it's a massive ground. They can't defend all of it. We've got to be able to find some spaces. But credit to the Crows so far. They've shut that down. Maybe it'll open up as fatigue sets in. Kick to half forward. Scott created a contest. It'll spill over the back. Mithen, time to gather. Not time to dispose of it, though. Well played, Martin. Won the football. Out the back to Thompson. She hacks it forward. Sheriff coming in one direction. She's got time and space. Colvin will gather. Nice kick. Finds Hanks just forward of the wing. Hanks decides to go through the middle. Has Paxman. Harris is deep forward. Scott there too. She winds up 
Decides to get the longer target in Harris. Off hands in good position, Purcell. Wrapped up straight away though. But they've got another deep forward entry, the Ds. They're doing well double teaming Harris, aren't they? That time it was Bedell who took the body in the marking contest, just not allowing her to run and jump at it. Bedell's had a really great season. I mean, she's learning for the training from Chelsea Randall. Not a bad person to learn from. And Purcell just shuffled out to Hall. Goes Goldwood. While well, the ball spills free deck in the goal square. And Bannon tried to get a toe poke to it. To it. And just happy to be bounced over the line is Bedell. So the Ds have their first score. It's taken till deep in. This is second term. And it's only behind. So we've got plenty of work to do. Good news for the Ds. Matty Gay back out on the field. Strapped up and hopefully good to go. There she is alongside Phillips. I was a bit worried about Maddie Gay. She didn't have, a, she had a bit of a look of dread on her face as she was getting that, yeah. that knee taped. Alongside Hatchard, in fact, back to that Hatchard roll straight away. Ball in dispute. We'll have a ball up 70 metres out from the Melbourne goal. Can they pinch one before half time? Give them a real burst of belief and confidence. Pierce went looking for Purcell. Here's a chance for McNamara. Bustled off the football. Hatchard with Gay alongside. Just so physical on the inside, Adelaide. They've been intimidating teams for years. Melbourne know it. They've braced themselves for it. Jones just beats Purcell. Hanks and Marinoff. There's Paxman ripped off the football. There'll be a Melbourne free kick. Advantage will be paid and shortly brought back. It will be. Chaos, I know. Brought back. Nick McGuinness, umpire with a free kick there. Ebony doesn't look like she agrees with that. Paxi, great ball user. We've seen the D start to try and change angles a little bit. Where's the space? Paxman will go long to a pack. And again, look at Harris, he's got three to beat. That's just not the answer. It's not going to get it done for Melbourne. They cannot win if they play like that. The Crows will just pick it off time and time again. Cool goes wide, but picking it off is Bannon. She's going to run in for their first. If they need the D's, it's sparked by the X Factor in Bannon. Well, you almost wondered how else were they going to score one. But they pinched the pocket and got the first on the board for the D's. She just read it better, didn't she? She, she sort of gave that teasing space and, and then just read it far better. She's got great range, doesn't she, Mel? And by that I mean she's got such long legs. She moves really quickly and really long arms and wingspan as well. She could just get to contests that others can't. Yeah, I think I, I caught her the quadruple threat. <laughs> and just here, as you can see, just read it far better. Yeah. Trying to switch the ball there, the Crows, but Bannon read it off the boot and beautiful intercept mark. It's that old adage about not kicking to a stationary target, Peck. Oh, Coach Killer. That is, honestly, I know we watched it, watched it in slow motion, but it did look like it happened in slow motion. <laughs> So is that the spark Melbourne need? Or can Adelaide respond with one of their own at half time and land another body blow? Lampard holds it up inside 50. We're back to a 10 point margin. Final minute of the opening half. See Daisy just rolling herself in defense for this last minute. Gould flips it over the top. Wouldn't sit for Martin. Pierce puts her head down over the football. They scramble at ground level. Phillips over her head. Dees have got some numbers around this one. It was an awkward bounce. Birch immediately tackled. And nowhere to go. And they would have trained for this scenario that the Dees, if there's, you know, a minute or, or two left or under a minute, you know, they've put an extra back and happy yep. to take that from the forward line. Daisy Pierce stands alone in the goal square. Ready for the quick kick in, which may or may not come. Hall links up with McNamara. Allen backs out, gets boot to ball. Lampard, difficult bounce. Bodies flying everywhere in that contest. Umpire Melbourne. spotted a free kick. It's Stand. Melbourne's way and with nine Stand. seconds left. They just need to be tidy here. And now Pierce peels off from the defensive goal square to create, create an option. And it is half time in the 2022 AFLW Grand Final. The Adelaide Crows 2-5-17. Melbourne 1-1-7. One, one, it was the D's by seven points at quarter time. Ten points at the half. Adelaide by ten in the grand final. All at home. Thanks, Sammy. It's only a 10-point game. Feels like the margin should be greater than that. What can Melbourne change up in the second half? You get the feeling Adelaide would be happy to just 
keep things rolling as they are as we start the second half of the 2022 AFLW Grand Final. Pierce versus Gould in the ruck. Marinoff puts her head over the football, immediately tackled by Hanks. Phillips flips it out. Hatchard kicks it inside 50 for the first time in the third term. Bouncing football past Colvin. Pass Woodland. Woodland first back onto it from the pocket. Snaps goalward. That's a wonderful looking kick right to the line. And Danielle Ponta marks in the square for the perfect start to the second half for the Crows. Well, deep entries in good spots is something Adelaide couldn't get in the first half. Hence they kick 2-5. Ponta steps up. And the Crows out to a 16-point lead. Ideal start, 45 seconds into that third term. Wonderful kick in from Ash Woodland. Arjun back out to 16 points. So Danielle Ponta, quiet game last week, Mel. Good start to the second half for her. So we're back in the middle. The margin back out to 16 points. And the quick kick from Marinoff. We'll send Adelaide inside 50 again. Heath got hands to it first. Has supporting Goldrick. Has to dance around a couple. Hand pass. Looking for Hanks onto it now. She's going to be under pressure though. Able to get the hand pass off towards Paxman. Just swamped. And Adelaide emerged with it through Martin. She goes inside and through Thompson. They look to go forward, but the kick Stand. off target and Colvin. Able to wrap that one up. The kick doesn't go 15, so they'll have to move. Standing in front, Gay unable to take the mark, was injured in that first half, but able to continue the game. I thought they strapped up that right knee. But Melbourne needs to lift here. If Adelaide get another, it might be too far back already. Pierce. And a jumper slightly held. Umpire oh, didn't call it at Hatchard. We'll send them inside 50 again. Over the top. Colvin with work to do. And on the jumper. Gets it out towards Goldrick. Disposal number 10. And Lily Mithen takes the mark. She'll go short down the line to Scott. Hit up target. Marks in front of Allen. So this is where they've been hemmed in in the first half. Adelaide have just been able to work them towards the boundary line. Cut off one half of the field. Scott will kick to a contest again. Harris does well to get it to ground. Hall to Hanks was the right idea, left it behind. Now a chance for Marinoff. Beautiful step inside Pierce. Kicks towards centre half forward. Dees have got numbers back. This is where Melbourne need to be a little bit more bold. They've got to run their guts out in the second half. Just get it out in a wide open space. And there's no better runner than Paxman. Now Lampard. But it's got to be quick. You can't hold it up like this. Adelaide will just get behind the football and force a contest as they do here. Chelsea Randall comes across, takes the mark. Rinse and repeat right now. She was superb last week against Freo. 12 intercept possessions. Who will go short to Marinoff. Zanka sets up down the line, as you can see in the hole there, to prevent Marinoff being able to kick into that space. So Hatchard presents a little deeper, and Birch cuts it off. So this is the opportunity for Melbourne here, Beck. They've now got to start making some decisions as to what they do with the football. I think it's okay to have a slow one here. And I like, I like the idea of going out wider, but then as soon as we get there, it's got to be a little bit quicker. There's Paxman running along. If she can kick it that far, Bannon. Brings it a little more inboard. And really in the end, sort of in between Paxman and Harrison, Hatchard. Able to chop it off. A little bit of kick to kick to open this last term. As Adelaide look to go inside again. A good spoil by Colvin. McNamara picks up the footy. He's tackled to the deck straight away. It bobbles out though, so Woodland. Can't go anywhere though. She's wrapped up. 
It just looks to me like the, the Melbourne players aren't on the same page with, with what they're doing with, with their ball movement. Some look like they're trying to bring the ball through the corridor and by hands like they normally do, and, and then at times they're trying to find that mark. It looks like they're all a little bit confused and not on the same page. Hatchard with it out of the air. Jones overran it. Goldrick tough over the footy. Pierce. Well, the umpire blindsided there. She should have been pinged for holding the footy. There's Goldrick wrapped up by Hatchard. Lauren Pierce, not as much influence today as perhaps she has in some other games. We go back inside 50. Through Button. A little hand pass off to McNamara. And she looks up. She want Hanks. Kick goes wide. One bounce and out of bounds. So little lasso rule. And then Allen will be able to bring it back in. Hatchard calls for it in the space. You can see at the top of the square there. Top of your screen. She heads in that direction. Can Hatchard get to the contest? Almost. McNamara. The outside of the boot is a clever kick to Fitzsimon. This is where Melbourne needs some run from behind. A bit of creativity. A bit of gut-busting run. Hanks. Goldrick. Fitzsimons muscles her way through. Kicks to space. And unfortunately for the D's, finds Jones sitting behind the football. Jones will go short and find Marinoff. Player down, off the ball. It's an Adelaide player. It's Tia Charlton in the hands of the trainers, just getting to her feet now. Just grabbing at the left side of her head there. Check with Sammy shortly. Goldrick has the free kick for the D's. So again, she looks to change direction, try to create something. I'm not sure she knew exactly what she was creating. She gets the one-two from Lampard. They've run themselves into trouble. Heat's run down. Like the endeavour, not quite the execution though. And Adelaide collapse on it as we head down to Sammy. Yeah, Jace, we'll keep an eye on the injury bench here, but I just think it's worth revisiting the last time these sides met. Melbourne that day, it was round four, did not break through for a major score until the final term, and they slammed on three. But I feel like it's um, history repeating itself. We know what they're like in full flight. They break the lines, they kick goals, but against the Adelaide Crows, they're just failing to do that again. Yeah, they're being really well held, Sammy. And Mel, your point a moment ago, they just don't seem like they're on the same page. And when they tried to move it from the back line, then with that change of handballs, they're obviously they're almost urging their teammates to move. Mel, do you reckon they, that Mick showed a bit of tape at half time on that? Yeah, I mean, potentially. I don't know what, what access they've got to, to yeah, technology the down there. But whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a, a yeah. lot of players are, are visual learners, and it does help to, to be able to show them. Obviously, how, how the ball's being moved and where they're breaking down. Maybe a chance here. We've got to get the ball back to Harris. It was pretty well done by Round to hold up as long as she could. <laughs> she might go long here and see what's out the back. Oh, it's Horn. She's taken the mark. They need this one. And she's done the damage. Kate Hall has kicked Melbourne second. Well, to say they needed that was an understatement. It was that style over the back. It happened to be Kate Hoare on this occasion. She doesn't need many opportunities to do some damage and able to slot one through, cutting the margin back to 10 points. Well, that was a perfectly weighted kick into Hoare. And the other thing I say about that is I reckon the Crows know that the slower that they can make them, the better it will be. You saw Chelsea Randall give that ball back very slowly, but Melbourne were able to move it just quick enough to be able to score, and that's how they're going to find a way to goal today. And that Adelaide zone defensively presses up so high. If you can get it over the back, you're a chance to score. And the Dees did that against Brisbane in the preliminary final to bust it open late. So can that give Melbourne a bit of a burst of adrenaline? Fitzsimons off to Paxman. She was held when not in possession. So things starting to go a little bit Melbourne's way all of a sudden. She thought about the gift to Myth and then realised she was covered. Phillips almost gets to Paxman. Pierce delivers inside 50 and Harris gets on the end of it. So a chance for Melbourne now to have two in a minute. Taylor Harris will kick from 40 metres out, slight angle. And it does feel like the time is now for Melbourne. The second touch of the afternoon coming up. Every time she's gone near the football, she's had two or three opponents to deal with. 
Gets a little bit of quick ball movement. And now she'll go short to Paxman. 45 degree angle, a little bit closer. That was poor from Adelaide's defence. He should have been up there on Paxman. Seen that one coming. One of the finest players in AFLW history, Karen Paxman, the five-time All-Australian. Played in seven flags with the Darabin Falcons. A couple of best and fairest with Melbourne. Five times in the top three, just so consistent. The side needs her now. 35 out, makes good contact. It's just drifting right though. Much better signs from the D's for this little sort of five minute patch here. That looks like they've made a positional change with, with Daisy being put down back. She hadn't had a lot of it in the first half. Limited opportunities though. Melbourne's forward line is Mithen. Looks to grab that one, but he's wrapped up straight away in a strong tackle by Martin. The Mel, the logic behind that is that Daisy's creativity and smarts to be the launch off half back and pick the right option? Yeah, definitely. And no doubt her, her ball use. And, and she does read the ball so well in the air. So I guess they, they want to try and get the, the intercept marks through her and, and then create their attack. So Goldrick got boot to ball, went into the middle of the ground. McNamara didn't get the bounce she wanted initially, but was able to reel it in well. Her kick towards Hanks, who just tried to belt it on. No one able to reel it back in, though, to Rajic. And now Marinoff is. Tackled as she got rid of it, affected the kick. And now, as you spoke, Mel, there is Daisy. Goes in board to Miffin. Needs to get back off the mark to move it a little bit more quickly. Has options sideways if she wants. Might go a little bit more direct this time. She goes by hand. Gets the footy back. And the Alba send them inside 50. Skull have to fly from the side. Batting got hands to it too. Bedell just hand passed it over the top. And the cool heads of Adelaide will look to clear the footy. Idea's right to try and be creative, but still a long kick into a big nest of crows. Mm. That's the piece that's missing. But good signs here from Melbourne. At least prepared to try and spread the ground a little and create some run and force Adelaide to defend. Munyard, not for the first time today, bounces and it doesn't come back. Kicks to half forward. Phillips, the crumb. Birch in good position here. Ponta heads out after her, does well. Just slips high in the, in the tackle, gives away the free kick. There's been a definite change of approach here from Melbourne. Got to spread, got to run hard, create some space. And as we mentioned, Karen Paxman, phenomenal runner. Beautiful step around Ponta. Long to a contest. Bannon at the back. Hacks it out of the air. Purcell. West goes in and finds it. Needs to get involved. Sheriff. Little gift to West. Missed the target. Eliza goes in, lays a tackle on Allen. They could use a bit more from Purcell and West on the inside to get it and feed it out. And then you start to feel the likes of Bannon and Paxman are going to become the most important players on the ground for Melbourne. And McNamara, they're elite runners. Zanka puts a good bump on. Paxman now. Is it punched away from her and a tackle? So Adelaide having a little bit more trouble themselves now moving the footy. The pressure's increased from the Ds. Sheriff affected the hand pass and then the joint tackle from Western Fitzsimon to keep it in the area. Melbourne are owning this at the moment. Hatchard's gone quiet. Paxman stepped up. Pierce just wrenches it out of the ruck. Rajic spilt the mark. How's Allen there for support? Looks up and wants wide. Goldrick. Matched up against Phillips. Goldrick has been good for them today. 14 disposals. Was held firm. And we see Phillips in the midfield at the moment too. Doc Clark wants her in until they get, get control back of this, this passage. Well, she got the footy there and didn't get rid of it in time. Has been pinged for a throw. She's not happy. And Goldrick wants to move it quickly. Has Daisy Pierce, who just pokes it over the top. A little hand pass off to West, perhaps taken without the footy. Gay comes in, went without it. They're fighting for it hard. Pierce now, a little hand pass off, and the D's are back inside, 50. Scott with a couple to beat. It gets over the back, not quite. Bedell tackle, ball hits the deck. We've got some work to do, Rachic. Has Scott there, McNamara waiting, sweating on the loose one. Now Mithen can't get boot to ball. Purcell under pressure. 
Wonderful tackle by Munyard. We've got a game. You can well and truly feel that pressure. That pressure knob has definitely gone up. No time or space for anybody on this field. Big two minutes left in this third term. Pierce in the ruck against Hewitt. Zanka tries to fend off, does get free. Flips a handball at Mrs. Mithen. She spins into a tackle, taken down. Umpire said it was a dump. Free kick, Lily Mithen. Will take her best from here. She's 35 out directly in front. Melbourne having the best period of the game so far for them. And this to reduce the margin to just three points. With 90 seconds left in the third term, a huge kick. Lily slotted a massive goal late in the final to win one against GWS, their first ever final. But right now, this is the biggest kick of her career. Off the right-hand side of her boot. And it's taken by Bedell. Can the Ds at least lock it in, or can Adelaide find a way through here and land a late blow? Melbourne just can't afford to let this get out of their 50 here. They've got to try and lock it in, get another forward entry. Hatchard goes long over the head of Hewitt. Birch against Ponta. Purcell arrives to provide some support. Ball flips towards the line. In the back free kick, Adelaide. So still some time potentially here for the Crows. It's Ponta at half back. The home fans getting into it too as players go down off the ball in the middle of the ground. Got a fabulous mark taken by Matty Gay. He was injured in that first half, got the right leg strapped. Just to go by hands to Pierce. She goes sideways to Lampard. Hand pass to McNamara. He'll just load up. More Crows jumpers than Melbourne in that pack. Ball hits the deck though, Bannon now. We know the speed she's got if she can get on the end of the footy. Allen, oh, wonderful smother by Scott. Stays in the field of play. Allen by hand, that won't be 15. Rachich will have to still go. Looks out wide in the arms of Heath. There's a siren sounds for three quarter time. And you said it, Jace, we've got a game in our hands. The margin back to nine points. Adelaide 3 5 23. Lead Melbourne 2 2 14. We know that she finds the ball really well. Um, and reads the ball really well. Karen Paxman had a massive influence in that third term as well. Goldrick off half-back, another of their great runners. They do have speed and athleticism. Can they use it, or will the Crows get the game back on their terms? Final quarter, the 2022 AFLW Grand Final, Adelaide by nine points. Marinoff in the middle. Off to Pierce. He gave a little toe poke, and it worked fortuitously to Gay, who loads up at Harris, a big fly. Nothing doing. Bannon, dangerous. Couldn't get boot to ball quickly enough in front of Allen. She might get it back here. Sheriff's there too. Looks for the hands, looks for Hall. She's wrapped up straight away. And there's, there's a player down in trouble too. Pretty uncomfortable. I'm not sure who that is, but the Adelaide player was aware of the situation, so called the trainers straight away. And it may be a sh shoulder or something. Oh, we'll have maybe. to wait and see. Yeah. Might be Sheriff actually. In this tackle oh. from Randall. <gasps> oh. Just has the arm twist underneath. Yeah. The wrist, the left wrist you can see she's holding there. She's going to come from the ground in obvious discomfort. We feel for her. Oh, so fair to say hard. she won't return. So the D's are going to be a player down. As the umpire looks to restart it pretty quickly to Pierce. Little hand pass off. Hanks trying to track the footy. And Marinoff just goes off the deck. The home fans, the appreciative cheers. Sheriff has made her way to the boundary. But it's Hatchard who wants to send them forward. And the race is on now with Ponta. She gets goal side of Birch. Ponta gathers at 55. Wide open goal square. Has she got penetration on the kick? No, it'll pitch and stop. Bad bounce for Heath. Ponta comes hard the other way and crashes in. Physical contest between Heath and Ponta. And there's a stoppage 12 metres out from the Adelaide goal. Here's another look. Both players turning their shoulders to protect themselves. Great technique. Lauren tried to get it to Daisy. Ponta dispossessed. Melbourne fans held their breath. It was holding the football. Pierce comes away. 
Rachich almost. Bannon scraps with her. Mithen tried to go off the deck. Bannon comes in over the top, lays a tackle. Umpire calls for the football. Let's head down to Sammy. Yeah, Jay, she can see Casey Sheriff there. They're assessing that left wrist, but she looks very uncomfortable. I asked Matthew Clark in the break about Eloise Jones. She didn't hear his final address because she had a left foot issue, but you heard it from the coach. He gave her the thumbs up, so she is out there with Eloise Jones. Hankster Harris over the back. This is the danger. The X factor in this game is Alyssa Bannon. If she can get goal side at any stage with her speed, it's trouble for Adelaide. Well played by the defence there to shut it down. Dumped in a tackle, umpire said illegally. Randall put down by Fitzsimon. And Chelsea Randall, who took one of the marks of the year in the third quarter, can settle things down for the Crows. Decides to go through the middle. They could be on here, the Crows. They've got the runners. Jones just decides to bash it forward towards Hatchard. On the left, a wobbler inside 50. And a wonderful mark taken in defence by Goldrick. Gee, she's been good. She was good last week too. Outstanding One, final series. Two. Goes over the top, dangerous. Phillips. Swamped around. They've got a couple of goalkeepers back One. there. And Colvin can use Birch. Has to go direct because that's where the options are. And safe hands of Daisy Pierce. Outside five. Seems she's been given license One. by Mick Stenier to sort of start as that extra defender but then move two. forward and be the option if she can. As so they go wide to Heath. Kick partially smothered. McNamara has pace. Decides to throw it on the boot, looking for Lauren Pierce. It's Simon. Little hand pass over the top to West, and perhaps got a couple of runners now. She just goes for grass. Adelaide with the numbers, but a little hand pass over the top. Bannon to Hall. Bends around the corner. Wrenched by the jump up. Bursting through. The shot on goal. Well, oh, it's twisting back. Not quite enough. Had a good curve on it. But nothing doing for Lampard. It's the D's struggling, fighting, trying to wriggle free. This next goal, enormous. Patel. Hatchard runs into Myth and just powers her way through. Myth and stuck to the task. It falls to Heath. High kick to half forward. Harris will arrive late and spoil Randall. Fitzsimon at the back versus Randall. Najwa Allen puts it on her boot and kicks it out on the full. You can see Najwa with the head bandage. She and Eloise, in fact, she and Tia Charlton had the head clash in the third term that saw them both spend a bit of time on the bench recovering. McNamara, again, one of Melbourne's best runners. So it's McNamara, it's Paxman, it's Bannon. Melbourne's best runners. Getting busy in this second half. Mithen. Not the right option or execution. Just tugged that kick. She was looking for the short one. Pulled it left and Phillips cut it off. So the Crows holding firm. Zanka sets herself. Woodland over the back. Front and centre and taken to ground. It was Munyard. Good tackle. It's been rewarded by Mithen. Melbourne's pressure in the third and now starting the fourth quarter has been excellent. It's really what's got them back in the game. You can see them setting up to the top of your screen there in the top left corner. They're trying to set the, the switch, but Adelaide smart enough to shut it down. So Zanka will just go long. Harris have to fly against Randall. He's often had more than Randall to compete with this afternoon. If she can keep it at ground level, you'd say that's really a win. So all she needs to do, Harris, is bring it to ground. Zank is going to do the ruck work now for the D's. Tuck comes over the back. Hatchard has her kick partially smothered. Zanki got a fist to it. Goldrick always tough over the footy. A little hand pass. Under pressure is Daisy Pierce. You can really feel Melbourne are lifting to the challenge here and rising to the challenge. Daisy spoke yesterday and said that they've got such belief within this group. They've been able to endure, come from behind wins, have been challenged through games. She said they've got that maturity. And they've won themselves a free kick through that pressure. A good tackle by Maddie Gay. She won the ball for holding the footy. 
Sure, she's got the carry in her leg, but it looks like she's lining up for a shot. It's going to go long into the goal square. Harris got bumped off the footy. McNamara, we saw her kick a beauty the other week from here. Similar pocket, and it's trickled over the boundary line. Dominate, please. Harris landing heavily on that left shoulder. Again, with two or three to beat in the air. So Zanka sets herself against Gould, will get rid of Gould in the end. Went to grab the footy, couldn't quite McNamara. Just throws it on the boot goal, it'll go wide Randall. Tracks the footy Sorry, and over the boundary line, be thrown in from a similar again, position. So can the D's get a bit of movement at this stoppage? Someone hit the ball at speed. Hold that meter. This is where I'd love to see Loz Pierce in the ruck in the, in the forward line. We know how clever she is. She's obviously off at the moment with a rotation. Can someone sweep through here for Melbourne, yeah. Zanka? Goldrick coming the other way. Paxman tries to swoop through. Busts through the Phillips tackle. Gay in over the top. And a stalemate 20 metres out from Melbourne's goal. Mixed to near up and about on the boundary line. Seven minutes left in the grand final. Deezer striving. Adelaide rising to the challenge defensively. Ball in dispute again. Mithen comes in. Adelaide defenders have to be so careful here to not give away a free kick as the pressure continues to build. Sank at the tap, the crowd get involved. Here's Goldrick, wanted to get onto her right boot. Gay does get onto the right boot and misses. Oh, Maddie Gay, she's having a really great last quarter here. Involved in everything at the moment, and I reckon she's in a bit of discomfort with that knee too, but she's just going on with it. So the Crows will look to clear their 50. Bedell just goes for distance. And she's gone to a two on one. But it might work out in their favour, depending on which way the ball bounces. Right, and a good hand pass off. And over the top, through Jones. They've got a little bit of run. Spots up Charlton. And over the top, unopposed. Ponta can take the grab. She wants to move it quickly. Thought she was too far out to score. Takes a bounce. Goalwood. Can she seal it? Just about. Wowza. Danielle Ponta. Danielle Ponta. Goal number two for Ponta. After Melbourne having their forward 50 for quite a while, it just went bang, 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 straight down the other end for a goal. Oh, a great mark from Danielle Ponta. She knows where the goals are. And I didn't think she had a great game against Freo last week, but I've never seen this girl have two stinkers in a row. And look at the crowd go berserk with her there. It was a contrast in ball movement, wasn't it, Mel? Oh, and just talk about taking a moment. She she saw that that um, Colvin was on the ground. She's like, I'm up and about here. I'm going to take it on. Knew that there was a one-on-one -on -one ahead of her and, and just amazing. We mentioned how big that goal would be. It really is. Melbourne now just simply have to go. Phillips. Marinoff turn in the tackle. Paxman finds the football, kicks to half forward. Juggling effort. Fitzsimon couldn't complete it. Randall gets it on the boot. Out to Hatchard. Some time in possession now, really all Adelaide needs. Hanks wraps Hatchard up. The D's have to make something happen. Rachich off to Marinoff. Kicks into the middle of the ground. Phillips goes to ground. Now a chance for McNamara. She streams inside 50. Puts it into the path of Bannon. Bannon shoulder to shoulder with Randall. Randall takes front spot. Bannon takes her to ground. Umpire says play on. Harris arrives. Randall goes hard. Bannon down behind the play. Bedell. McNamara scraps. Ball spills free. Harris can't quite control it. Keeps it alive. Feeds it towards the pocket. Purcell takes Rachic in a tackle. Spills to Allen. She pops it over the top. And Najwa, a little bit of time to assess her options. Kicks it out towards half back. Dees will want to come again. Goldrick takes on the tackler. Handball too fierce for Pierce. Comes back to Daisy from Lauren. She kicks inside 50. And Chelsea Randall again. She's really coming to this game now, Randall. Disposal number 10. 
which has been wonderful at stopping Harris having an influence on the contest, really. As Marinoff can pop to her feet and kick it over the top. Martin, a hand pass. If they move it on quickly here, well, that was a desperate tackle by Pierce because Ponta was out again over the top if they could get it there. And pass to Colvin. He just jammed it on the boot, but only as far as Thompson. He'll just poke it wide. Little hand pass there back inside. 50, a wobbler. But it's landed in the chest of Ponta. Aaron telling him to kick it. Just go and kick it. So go and kick it. Take your 30 seconds. Take your time. Kick the opening goal in the third and the opening goal in the fourth. And Considine looked a little ugly off the boot, but it got the result she was after. Ponta from directly in front. Shanked it off the side of the boot. And underneath Daisy Pierce. Has spilt it, but there's time to clear. And kicks to Paxman. A little tired looking players at this well, moment in the game. Well done, Phillips. Got across Hanks. Then tries to spin through the tackle. Up by says holding the ball. Stand. Play on. Out to McNamara. Stand. Play on. Confronted on the mark by Martin. Steps around. Kicks to the middle of the ground. Here's Eliza West. Purcell. Zanka. In fact, it was Scott back to Purcell. Now to Harris from 52 metres. Thumps it long. It's a two on one in favour of the Crows. Thompson can get back there first. Zanka confronts. So she uses the support. Allen worked beautifully with Thompson. A couple of players that have played a lot of football together. Hewitt versus Hanks. Support comes from Paxman. Gets away from Charlton. Inside to Pierce. Pierce goes inside 50. Sarah Allen over the top takes the grab. All Australian defender. And about to become a triple premiership player. Play a triple AFLW premiership player in just five grand finals in the competition's history. It's remarkable, isn't it? And what a story this is, Jazzy Hewitt. Stay out, Stevie. Stay out, Eliza. Points oh, downfield. Says that's the way I'm going, girls. And it's all demon jumpers back there. So Birch takes the mark and knows they've just got to go quickly. McNamara. Hand pass over the top. Purcell, a short one. Wanted Scott. A little too much on it for her. Allen, we've got to wrap it up. Still fighting. A little hand pa little paddle by Scott was good to McNamara, who's tackled to the deck. And it'll be a lasso rule. The umpires will come and converge on it. See the attendance there, over 16,000 here at the Adelaide Oval. And as you can imagine, mostly Crows fans who are really enjoying this one now. Play on. Play on. Play on. They're cheering every mark and every kick. There's Jones, dances around and then picks up Phillips. A lot of talk about Phillips this week and perhaps this is the last time she wears a Crows jumper. She goes long. Daisy Pierce with the spoil. And it goes out of bounds. Throw in. Kate Hall does her best to get out of the way. Thompson, quick kick inside 50. Purcell being hunted by Woodland. Just got boot to ball up, I said, holding the footy. There's Munyard and Button and Gould and Considine. Start the celebrations. Birch, a premiership player with the Dogs in 2018. Kate Hall runs into a tackle. Ball spills free. Phillips kicks it off the ground. Goldrick been mighty for the D's. Rachich, three knee reconstructions. It's been quite a journey for her. Paxman has it. It's been great again today, Karen Paxman. Kick to half forward. Sarah Allen will cut it off. And the 
dominant force becomes a dynasty. The Adelaide Crows are champions of the AFLW for the third time.